All right, this is Mr. McCord's ICP class, unit four, lab number three, flame tests. Now, before we get to the flame test part of it, I wanna talk about what we are testing and why we are using flames to do it and what it has to do with all the stuff that we've been looking at in this unit here. All right, so we've been talking about atoms, what makes them up down to the protons and neutrons and electrons, and what varying a number of protons means for an element, what the number of neutrons means for different isotopes of an element, and what the number of electrons means for either the neutral atom of an element or charged ions, positive or negative ions that have gained or lost electrons. Now that last part is gonna be most useful to us. When things have gained or lose, lost, lost, lost electrons, a lot of times they are attractive to other things, uh, but we can also use them for something a little more exciting, right? Exciting in the, you know, human emotion sense, but also in the chemical sense. So not only is it exciting for us, it's also exciting for electrons, okay? Whenever you see a bulb like this neon light, right? We are seeing the excitations of electrons. Well, no, no, no. More specifically, we are seeing electrons get excited and then de-excite, right? They sort of cool down, they chill out, and that energy they no longer need is released out. So a couple questions. First of all, what does it mean for an electron to get excited? Okay, well, our protons are positively charged. Our electrons are negatively charged. They're going to attract to each other. They want to get close to each other. So the electron cloud is this sort of area where we're probably going to find an electron being pulled towards the nucleus. Now, some of those electrons we call the valence electrons, right, are farthest out on that atom. They're on the outermost edge of the atom, okay, because they can only crowd in so close. Those electrons, as I've been saying, should do the exciting stuff for us. They're going to be bonding and, and doing stuff, and they're what's going to get excited in this case. Now, those electrons, as close as they get, are still going to be on the outside if we're dealing with those important ones, the valence electrons. So where those valence electrons pack in and sit on the outside edge of the atom, we call that the ground state. It's kind of the chilled out state. It's the place where the electrons go naturally. It's home base for them. Okay, so that's where we expect electrons to be. Now, if an electron has a bit more energy, a little bit more oomph, then it doesn't have to stay so close to the nucleus, okay? If it has a little bit of extra energy to go out farther away from the nucleus than it would normally be, then maybe it is gonna you know, kind of stray out a little bit farther. It's gonna go against kind of that natural position. It's going to have a little bit of you know, ability to escape from that attraction to the nucleus. Okay, well, it does want to be attracted to the nucleus. It does want to stay kind of at that ground state. So when the electron gets excited, when it picks up extra energy, it will stray farther from the nucleus, but it can't stay that way, all right? It's got to return home at some point, back to the ground state. So the excited electron in the excited state that is farther from the nucleus eventually has to come back if it's getting back closer to the nucleus, it's kind of falling back into that chill, relaxed state. So it's got to get rid of that energy that it picked up, that we put in for the electrons. Okay, so our electron gets excited by picking up energy. When it returns back to the ground state, it releases that energy. We see that energy as light. Okay, so what's going on in this neon bulb here is the excitation of electrons, and then the de-excitation where they release that energy back out and it comes out as light, okay? Now, there are a lot of cool things that can be done with this. This is one of the ways we figure out how stars are made up of different elements, all right? We kind of fingerprint them to see what light is coming out of stars and then say, okay, well, this element should put out this amount of light in this kind of set of colors of light, and then this element does this, and this element does that. Um, now also, 
you've probably heard of things referred to as neon lights that aren't actually neon lights. What you see here is actually truly neon gas trapped in a tube that we run electron through, electricity through. Okay. If you see other colors of neon lights that are blue or green or something like that, yellow, then they're not truly made of neon. They are some other gas in there that has a different set of electrons that move and excite differently. And when those electrons return back to the ground state, the light that they release is a different color than what we see here. Okay? So here are a couple examples of some other gases in tubes. Okay? In all these cases, we are exciting the electrons by putting in electricity. Now, electricity isn't the only way we can excite the electrons in an atom. We can also put in light and then get back out light. Okay? One of the most fun examples of this is glow-in-the-dark stuff and fluorescent stuff. So whenever you see something that's glow-in-the-dark, like this guy over here, this little pad, if I turn my light off, you probably won't be able to see. So I'm going to beam this with some high-energy ultraviolet light. Right? Not really good to look into, but it's kind of a, a purplish color. It's what we would call ultraviolet light. The part we need is the part we can't see, but the part that we can see that's closest to it is that violet light, so that's why it looks kind of purple. Okay, so if I beam this with this ultraviolet light, we get light back out. Now, this doesn't shine purple, it shines green, which is a little weird. Okay, I put energy in and energy comes back out. All right. The energy that comes out, the light that comes out of these electrons as they de-excite from the excited state back to the ground state has to do with how far out they went and how far back they go when they return. More energy means they move farther out, which means they jump back farther, which means the energy of light they release is higher. Okay, Higher energy for light means farther down the rainbow. So purple like violet light and blue light is high energy. In this case, the color I'm getting back out is green, so we've lost a little bit of energy in the process, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so we can put in electricity to get this to happen. We can put in light to get this to happen. All right, I've got some laser pens here also. This one's UV. All right, just like my big flashlight here. All right. This guy is red. See that? Mess up the camera. Ooh. Okay. Interestingly enough, it doesn't do anything to this glow-in-the-dark stuff, which is kind of weird. Okay. You need a certain amount of energy to get the electrons kicking. Okay. So I can't just put in a little bit of energy and expect my electrons to dance for me and release light. Okay. It's why my bulb here does not just suddenly start glowing because I'm shining light on it. Okay. I need to put in enough energy via electricity or light or some other kind of energy to get this to work. Now in a flame test to bring this all together, the way we put energy into the electrons is with heat. All right, we use the flame of a Bunsen burner, or in the example I'm going to show you, we're going to burn a little bit of an organic substance, and that flame is going to heat up the electrons in our sample. The samples we're going to use are ionic, okay? They are either cations or anions. In this case, I think we're focusing on cations, okay? Different elements, different amounts of charge, depending on how many electrons they've given up or how much they've taken in, right? How many they've gained or lost. Okay, we get different colors of light based on how those electrons are structured around the atom and how they jump. Okay, so we're going to see some different element samples that are ions, right? In this case, metal ions. You can do this for a lot of different chemicals. Sometimes it's a gas, sometimes it's a solid. In this case, we're looking at metals dissolved in what we call a solution. It's a liquid, essentially, okay? We're also going to focus on kind of reviewing what makes up an atom, okay? What it's built of, whether it's protons and neutrons and electrons, looking at the mass number, figuring out the valence electrons, and how many electrons are given or taken, how many are gained or lost, okay, to make that atom an ion when we see it glowing a color.